I used to teach guitar for a number of years, and the two questions my students asked me the most were, Michael, how do you pick so fast? And also, how do you practice? You know, how did you get your chops to where they are now? And so before we start doing the riffs, I'd like to uh, demonstrate my picking technique. When I used to get a um, student for the first time, and it was his first lesson, I used to ask him the very first thing when he walked in, and because I had a lot of hot young guitar players that wanted to take lessons from me, I'd go, well, impress me, blow me away. I want to see your best riffs. And usually guitar players have their one or two intimidation riffs that they've practiced for hours, and then after that, it's all over. They've blown their wad. And what I used to do is after I heard those couples, and I'd ask him again, I'd go, well, now I want you to play as fast as you can, but I don't want to hear anything that you've done before. And so they'd start playing, and I'd cut them off, and then I'd go, well, now I want you to play that lick slow. And they'd go, oh, wait a second, man, I can't play it slow. I mean, you know, I'm just playing. It's spontaneous. It just happens. And what I try to tell my students, and this is one thing you can get from learning these licks, is the, the moral of the story is to be fast, you have to practice slow because most people, they think to play fast, you have to practice fast. And what happens is that you practice all these licks and you don't know what the heck you're playing. And so what I did is I made them see the licks they played fast and slow it down. And when they play it slow, then you really concentrate on what you're doing with your left hand, your right hand. That's when you can get your speed down. So the moral of it is, the moral of the story is, is to play fast, you have to learn how to play slow. The way I pick is I put position my three fingers on the body of the guitar between the pickups, and my hand actually glides over the top. It's almost like a phonograph needle um, playing on a record. Um, also, I use Dunlap Jazz 3 picks. Um, they're the hardest picks that I've found, and they're the most pointed. And they're the hardest things I've found next to a rock. And other guitar picks that I've used literally started melting in my hand. They started bending around my thumb. So for my style of picking, and I think for good guitar picking, that you need a heavy pointed pick like a Dunlap Jazz 3. Okay, there's a common denominator between guitar players who can pick fast and guitar players who can't. And all that it is, and it doesn't matter if you hold your pick like I do, if you cup it like this and, and rest it on the bridge, if you hold it with two fingers, what angle you, you put it, you know, put it on the strings, all that matters is if you don't move the joints in your index finger and your thumb. In other words, if you keep it rigid, you can pick fast. The guys who can't pick fast flick their thumb. They play like this. And how fast can you flick your thumb? You can't do it. And so the common denominator if you want to play warp speed instead of impulse power is you have to keep your fingers rigid. And what I, what I did to uh, test my students and just to get a good idea is I had people play a tremolo. And what you do is you start a tremolo like this. And you notice the way you're picking. Your fingers are very rigid and then you slow it down. And now what most people tend to do is when they're playing fast and they slow it down, they change their picking style and that's when they get into this. And the way to become a fast picker is to play and look at, when you're playing like this, I call it the PPS, the potential picking speed, and to be able to slow it down so when you're playing slow, it's the same motion, so it's very fluid. Before we start the first exercise, let's tune up. I tune to A440, and I'll start on the first string E and work my way down. This is E, B, G, D, A, and E. Here's some exercises that you can warm up with to develop your chops. Now, you've probably seen this exercise before, but it's not in just playing it. It's how you play it. And there's a lot of little things to watch out for that, if you play it the right way, can really benefit you. First of all, the exercise is basically this. Now, if you'll notice, what I do with my left hand, and this is good left-handed technique, 
is you keep your thumb behind the neck and perpendicular to the guitar. And you make sure that this area here, that there's a little daylight. And when you first put your fingers on the strings, what you do is this. When you start this exercise, you put all four fingers on the frets and just, and then take a look at your hand. This is good fret positioning. This is good left-handed technique. Now everybody's hand is different, you know, some are bigger, some are smaller, but when you put your hand like this, that is the best possible positioning that you, your particular style and your particular hand can do. And when you play the exercise, as far as your right hand, again, make sure your fingers do not move, you know, that you don't do the flick of the thumb technique, and then you rip through the exercise. Now, also, when you play this, pretend there's an imaginary line over the frets, because most people's, everybody's fingers have a tendency to move that way. And what you want to do is make sure that you keep your fingers as close to the strings as possible. And that way, you'll, you know, you have to make sure that you don't move a lot. And what I call it is think lazy. You know, the lazier, the less you move, the better. And I used to call it economy of motion because the less you move, the faster you can play and the better you can do it. So it sounds like this. This is exercise number two, and it's an exercise in triads, and it's also got a lot of parts where you have to pick one note on each string, and it sounds like this. And here it is slowed down. This is exercise number three. Okay, this is a Dorian um, mode exercise. This is an A Dorian. Um, when you when you have four finger positionings, um, you can only get five positions on a guitar. So what this does, it's a good exercise for your left hand in that you're changing positions and your right hand and that you have to keep up with it. And so let me play it slow for you and it sounds like this. Okay, this is exercise number four, and it's based on a blues scale, and it's really good for um, keeping your fingers close because it works on the first and fourth finger, and it's also good for your third and fourth finger because there's a lot of play between them, and it goes like this. <laughs> and this is exercise four, slow. Okay, this is exercise five. Now, it's a real short riff, but um, what this is really good for is most of the problems that guitar players have with picking is that a lot of the riffs that they play are three notes on a string. And what happens is every other string, you're going to hit the neck, that string on an upstroke. And that seems to be the problem that most pickers have. So what this exercise is, in one little riff, is to work on that upstroke on another string. And it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 